is Kaiju Platypus, and today we have the Steam Controller unboxing. Today is October 16, 2015, uh, the day when the uh, early pre-orders of the Steam Controller arrive, which were available for purchase uh, July of 2015. Now, this literally just came in the door, uh, so let's have a little bit of fun unboxing this, shall we? Now, if you know about my previous set splits, you know that I'm a big proponent of everything that uh, Valve and Steam is trying to do. A computer instead of a console behind your TV. One of the first steps that they did is coming up with their own hardware for a controller that allows you to play not only normal games for console games, but allows you to play PC games uh, to solve the uh, ever-present problem of a keyboard and mouse. Now with that, this is the product after years of research and development. These were first available for people when they were doing the uh, Steam Bots demos, um, which all had to go back. <laughs> I tried to sign up for that, sadly, was outnumbered. Now here it is. Now, it's got a retro throwback kind of packaging, because although it's got the little slidey bit that pretty much every single new device has. Let's take this off. It's got a breakdown of the controller as a blueprint in the back, well, inside the actual casing. This That's nice, but I, I don't care. The packaging itself feels like something that comes out of like an old-timey uh, crate or such. It's, it's very old cardboard, but it's very new at the same time. The color scheme is very A-specific to Steam. It's the same type of blue that they use in everything. Uh, it's kind of like royal purplish blue for some reason, but anyway. Now. Got a little AdSense of the controller, Steam up here. Let's open this baby up, and here we go. The usual sky blue that you have for all of the uh, development work that uh, Steam usually does, and the controller itself nestled very nicely in this uh, form-fitting package with, oh, Steam logo right there, nice. Okay, well, first thoughts on the controller. Expect a full-fledged review of the controller with functionality and such uh, taken into account uh, a little bit later. Uh, but for right now, this is just a quick overview as to what's available right now. Uh, these are supposed to be dual trackpads, uh, HD haptics, you got an analog stick here. Uh, okay, we got clicky triggers and dual stage triggers here. They can be activated simply by touching them with applying slight pressure. And also at the end, there's secondary triggers built in. Uh, this has a gyroscope and an accelerometer uh, built in. So you can tilt to steer like a normal wheel uh, for motion controlled input. Uh, every single thing on here is configurable if you use uh, Steam and Steam Big Picture mode. You can save and change, etc, etc. Now, you're able to use multiple controllers wirelessly on a single computer if you have some type of a multiplayer component in the game that you're interested in. That's, that's pretty good. Uh, I guess it's able to uh, differentiate between different controllers, so having multiple uh, radio frequencies. Now, uh, this thing is both wireless and wired. This is a USB 2.0 port, and on the back here, it you have space for two AA batteries, an estimated 80 hours of game time uh, dependent. Now let's pop that back in. I like the fact that they made this uh, kind of like a, the actual cradle for the batteries built into a uh, ZIF kind of port. Uh, ZIF, uh, Usually it's the type of way that you uh, put processors into a computer without having to apply direct pressure. This allows you to open and close this without having to worry about breaking any piece of plastic or such that usually happens when you're talking about wireless controllers that then expose the batteries. If you had a wireless SetSpot 360 controller, you know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, on the note of the 360 controller, let's, let's not kid ourselves. This is a modified at Spots 360 controller. You have the same color scheme, you have the center console button, uh, the joystick feels the same, although at the same time it feels, best way to describe it is fatter. Yeah, and also the controller itself is much larger. Uh, the video doesn't actually show it, but my hands are ridiculously huge. So for me, the Xbox controller was always uh, kind of like very compact, very efficient. This on the other hand feels far more relaxed. The change in uh, the change in material, the change in texture, actually feels like you're 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 cradling something that's hugging you back. It's actually quite comfortable, and ridiculously light, lighter than it seems, lighter than a controller of this type should be, especially with all the things built into this. 
Uh, and to bring back on the point of the Edspot 360 controller comparison, here we go. <coughs> Mind you, the size difference is great, but it's basically the same thing. Now, one thing I will point out, though, is, is that years and years of using, using the controller gives you the sense that your, well, your hands are never really aligned. Your, hand, your, your thumbs are out of line, so that puts both your hands in different angles. Mind you, that might not cause strain to a lot of people, especially since you're not supposed to game for too long, but for pro gamers and such, it's kind of like a, I don't know, for the OCD in me, it's always been a bit of a bother. With this, on the other hand, your, your hands are cradled and forced to be pretty much at the same angle. So when you move the controller, both your hands move in the same angle. Multiple clicky spots on these trackpads, and the trackpads themselves seem to be covered with some type of a hydrophobic layer, because they don't seem to—I don't seem to be able to leave any any slight grease marks or anything on there. That's good. I like that. I prefer cleanliness. Okay, now with the rest of the bots itself. Uh, okay, we have a USB dongle with uh, the Steam logo. Uh, okay, the batteries that are wrapped in the plastic hate. Seriously, guys, can we not have this be the standard? It, it's fucking horrifying. Why? Because you have stupid people trying to cut this with scissors or knives. They puncture the battery and get themselves covered in acid. Mind you, I'm all for culling the herd, but fuck. Uh, packaging. Okay, this seems to be a quick start guide, and they took the whole IKEA approach that allows you to view the installation of the physical hardware uh, for dummies, no matter what language you speak. And this is the Steam Controller product guide. Nobody cares. And over here, we have, okay, this is the uh, dongle extender. You place this in front of your TV, Connect the dongle on top and connect it with the USB 2.0 cable that is provided to extend the range dependent on if your computer is away from the television, etc., etc. Or if your computer is in a precarious place and you don't want to put the dongle fearing that you'd lose uh, you know, connectivity. I don't think it's actually necessary because this thing provides you, uh, what is it, an estimated 5 meters of wireless communication range. If you're more than 5 meters away from your computer, uh, you got a, a whole set of other problems that you have to deal with first. <laughs> now, it does feel real nice. The dongle itself feels well built. It's, uh, ah, and this stand feels like the heaviest and most well built part of this entire package. But that, uh, that remains to be seen. So, here we go, people. The Steam controller. Expect a review within the next two weeks. Uh, I'm going to try to go in depth testing it out both on PC games and console games that I've ported over to PC. Who knows? Might even have some uh, configuration capability to run with uh, emulators. So, this is Kaiju Platypus signing off. Thanks for joining me.